Welcome viewer. In this video, we will look at how to implement Q using stacks. This is another popular programming interview question and it's a bit tricky one. Let's see how we can do this. First, let's understand how Q and stack works. Here is how a Q looks like. Q is a linear data structure and in its simplest implementation, you can think of Q as an array in a contiguous memory space, something like what is shown here, and Q elements from one end or insert elements from one end and DQ or remove elements from the other end. So let's see if you want to put one, two, and three in the Q, how it would look like. So you can call NQ operation on the Q, Q1, and it will put one over here. You call again NQ2, put two over here and when you call NQ3, it will put three over here. Right? When you call DQ, it will first take the Q uh, one out first, DQ, it will give you one. Again, you call DQ, it will give you two. Again, you call DQ, it will give you three, right? So if you see, it's a FIFO structure. That means first in, first in, first out. So whichever element went into the queue first, it will come out first. Tell how queue works. Now let's see how stack works. So stack is also a linear data structure like queue and in its simplest form, you can view it as a contiguous space of memory. And in stack, push and pop, they are the operations which are used to insert and remove elements from the stack. And as you can see in this figure, you push elements from one end, pop the elements from the same end. So let's see if we want to do the same sequence of one, two, and three, how does push and pop? So first, let's say when you call push, push one here, you call push two, it will put two here, and you call push three, it will put three here. When you call pop, it will take the first element out from the same end. That means top of the stack. So top of the stack here is three, so it will give you three. Then once three is removed and you call pop again, it will give you two. Once two is removed, you call pop, it will give you one. In Q, when you call DQ on one, two, and three, first it give you one, then two, and then three. And in the pop, it give you three, two, and one. Basically, you take the removal part of the elements, they are in different order, right? Tag, it's called really a life for structure. Last in, first out, right? So in this case, the last element to be pushed onto the stack, it was three, and it was the one that came out first. That's why it's called LIFO. This question is asking you to implement Q using stack. That means you need to use stack, but when you pop, the elements or when you remove the elements instead of getting in this case three to one you should get one two and three so instead of making it a lifo structure you need need to make it a fifo structure let's see how you can do that using stacks to solve this question you need to use two stacks let's see how what you do is you have these two stacks s1 and s2 and you use one stack to insert the elements and use the second stack to remove the elements. Let's take an example. So let's say, since we want to implement a queue, we will use the same operations, operations name that queue has, which is NQ and DQ. So let's say we want to use NQ and we want to NQ1, NQ2, and NQ3 use stack number one to NQ. So when NQ1 is called on stack number one, you call push, the one will go here. When NQ2 is called, you call s1.push2. In the same way, s1.push and three. Now let's say how the DQ will work. So when you call DQ, you want one because that was the first element which was inserted now in this case if you directly call pop operation on s1 it will give you three but we can make use of the second stack when a dq is called you move all these elements three two and one into s2 so when dq1 is called this is what you really do s2 dot push 
s1 dot pop so s1 dot pop will give you three and it will be pushed on s2 so this is how it will work then again you keep doing it until the s1 is empty the same operation so it will look something like this two and one that will make s1 empty and once S1 is empty, call pop on S2. So then you call S2 dot pop and that will give you one. Now let's say the user wants to call DQ right away. Then all you do is S2 dot pop again, pop again, and it will give you two. Let's say instead of calling this, user wants to call NQ4. In this case, what you need to move here in this case, since we already popped out one, let's take one out of the equation. And now it's only two and three, right? So, and after that, let's say user is calling NQ4. So in that case, first you move this two and three back onto S1. That means first you pop two from S2 and then push onto S1, something like this, this will go away, then number three, so this will go away from here and it will come here and then again you NQ4. Now let's say again user wants to do call a DQ operation, DQ operation should give you really two. So if you want to do that, then again you do the same sequence, first pop all the elements from S1 one by one and keep pushing it onto S2. So it will look something like this and then you call pop on S2 and it will give you number two. So in this case, what you are really doing is when you need to NQ, so let's see how NQ logic looks like. If S2 is empty, then you just push your element on S1, X, and here let's call it X to S1. Else, that means S2 is not empty else pop all elements from s2 and push to s1 then push x to s1 so here in this picture your s1 is empty and s2 s4 3 and 2 uh, user calls and q5 so let's look at this pseudocode if s2 is empty push x to s1 our x is 5 in this case s2 is not empty so we go to the else loop. So pop all elements from S2 and push to S1 and then push X to S1, right? So what we'll do is first we will remove two from here, put two here, pop three from S2, push it on S1, pop four from S2, push it on S1, and then push five onto S1. Let's see how the DQ logic looks like. So DQ logic is exactly opposite to NQ. Let's see how. So in the DQ, you first check if S1 is empty, then pop from S2. And pop will give you the top element. If S1 is not empty, then else pop all elements from S1 and push to S2 and then pop from S2. Look at in this picture. So in this picture, S1, S1 is not empty because it has two, three, four, five. So we go to the else condition. And in the else, you first pop all elements from S1 and push them to S2 and then pop from S2. So this is what you do. I mean, pop first five, push it onto S2, and then four, it goes to S2, then three, it goes to S2, then two, it goes to S2. And once all elements are moved from S1 to S2, then you pop from S2 and that will give you two. So this is how you can implement Q using stacks. Before diving into coding, let's think about the code. We are using two stacks, S1 and S2, and we need to have NQ and DQ method. Create a class that contains both S1 and S2 and call this class stack Q. It should have two members, S1 and S2, both are stacks and it should have two methods one is nq and another one is t so now we'll look into detail first we'll write some boilerplate code now we'll declare our class so as you can see in our class we have two stacks s1 and s2 and two methods nq and dq if you notice the stack are private members while the methods they are public so let's look at the dq method in the dq what we are doing is first we declare our return value after declaring the return value, we move all elements from stack S1 to stack S2. And if you notice the way the code moves is first it takes the top element of S1 and then it stores that value in X. And top it really doesn't remove 
the element from S1, it just gives you the value of the top element in the stack. So you need to call pop also and pop is the one which really removes the top element and then you push that into S2. After that, you know, once all elements are moved, you take the top value and retain it in the return value variable from S2 and then after that you remove that from S2, you pop it from S2. Once you are done doing that, you move all elements back into S1 so that when next time when you need to when you need to call nq all the elements are already there in s1 and you just add the next element on top of it okay so it preserves the order in nq method all you do is you simply call push you push the element onto the stack now let's look at the time complexity in the nq as we looked in the code push on stack s1 o1 because it is just calling a push operation on stack s1 now let's see dq. So in dq what we are doing is we move all these elements from s1 to s2 then remove the top element from s2 and return it and then again move everything back from s2 to s1. So that means we are moving the n number of elements from s1 to s2 take the top one and then moving n minus 1 elements back from s2 to s1 so our big o would be o n plus o1 which is for you know returning the top element and plus o n minus 1 and in this one the largest element is o n so it is really o n so the time complexity for nq is o1 and for dq it is o n now let's see space complexity so for space complexity what we did originally in the queue it has n elements so let's say the queue size is n and you in this solution you need to use two stacks so double the size of the original queue you are using additional n elements so the space complexity is o n i hope you enjoyed watching this video and learn something new today thank you